What's going on? Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. So, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, recap from yesterday was some great games we got to see in Elimination Game. New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces move on to the next round. Um, the Atlanta game, Atlanta and Seattle both came out firing on all cylinders. Um, they were all, both teams were playing desperation ball. And what I mean by desperation ball is, you know, you're going to lose, you know, if you lose this game, that it's all over. So they were taking a lot of these threes. They were um, playing decisive for like a quarter, sometimes two quarters. <laughs> then it like extended. In the New York game, New York just, Sabrina just went off. Um, Sabrina kept them in the game, then put them over the top. Fee bitch hit a big fee bitch hit a couple big threes down the stretch to seal the game. John Quell Jones played like John Quell Jones does. She played big in the post, got rebounds, got putbacks. The thing with Atlanta is they needed somebody to go along with Alicia Gray. I love Ryan Howard, but Ryan Howard, I don't know what happened this series and and down the stretch of getting to the playoffs. <clears throat> She has struggled to um, find her game. Um, and I'm glad this game they went to Alicia Gray early because Alicia Gray, you know, you need to get her in rhythm early because if you get her in rhythm early, she's going to be a tough person to beat. She's going to be a tough person to go against. Her threes were very intricate, attacking the basket. She attacked the basket a lot, got some buckets, got some and ones. Um, she was taken off early. They needed Ryan Howard down the stretch to take over. Um, Ryan Howard should have gave them about 25, 26 points. And they would have been able to get back in this game. But too much Sabrina, too much Stewie. Stewie was keeping um, keeping the game close, even though they were down by a lot. They like by 10, sometimes 15. Stewie kept the game in balance. She kept attacking knocking it down to 10, knocking it down to eight or six, and then getting them back in the game with Sabrina. Sabrina was just carrying the, the offensive load all game. Um, Laney Hamilton's defense, Sabali's rebounding, you know, helped out a lot. Um, but shout out to Atlanta. Atlanta's bench, Atlanta's bench really played big in this game. They just needed Ryan Howard to close the game at the end. If Ryan Howard could have closed the game, um, we would have saw a game three in Atlanta. But they didn't close the game. And um, um, Jordan Canada, she did decent. Um, she had an okay series. You know, Atlanta to me, coaching wise, I felt the coach on um, Tanisha Wright. She could have made some different moves. She could have rotated a little better. I mean, but she did what she could. Not having um Parker out there at the five, like helping Tina Charles down in the paint, really hurting them down the stretch this year. Um, they brought in somebody else. You know, she, I don't believe she played a lot of people off her bench. Um, Tanisha Wright should have, to me, went to the to the deep part of the bench to try to help because the New York Liberty just have too many bodies. Um, they didn't really play Burke like that or the others. They played really um, Sabali and um, and um, Feebich. Van Sloot came in for a little bit, but um, Feebich is um, – Feebich's great defense on the perimeter and the ability to switch on the um to big women really help um help them stay in the game and help them create turnovers, help them stabilize the dream. Um Sabrina's um um Sabrina, like I said, and Feebich did their thing down the stretch. 
Atlanta needed Ryan Howard. Ryan Howard needed to step up, and she didn't step up. So now we're going into next year. Whose team is this going to be? Like Auntie says, shout out to her. Make sure y'all go subscribe to Sess Talk Sports. Like Auntie says all the time. This is Alicia Gray's team. And Alicia, to me, talent-wise, it should be her team. Ryan Howard, to me, would be better as the co-star. Um, because Alicia's game is just so dynamic on both ends of the floor. And she could play all three levels. She could defend on all three levels. Um, so Ryan Howard could have came up big, and, and she just faded down the stretch. And this is what I've been saying about Atlanta the whole year is that Ryan Howard in, in some of the big games – she kind of faded away down the stretch. Not saying she's a bad ball player. She's not. She's a great player. But she fades a lot near the end of the game. And Alicia Gray was keeping them afloat. Um, Tina was doing her thing. But this ain't the Tina from like five or six years ago or seven years ago. This was the Tina from seven or eight years ago. Oh, yeah, they done won this game. <laughs> but – you know, Nas came off the bench, gave some good hustle points. I don't know if they played Maya Caldwell. I didn't see a lot of Caldwell. She might have been hurt. Um, you had some other players that were in there. They did their thing off the bench. I don't know their names off the top of my head. But they played. The Atlanta bench did a great job. The person who did not step up was Ryan Howard. That was it. Um, they had they could have beat New York this game. They just didn't step up. <laughs> Ryan Howard was doing her thing in the first half. Second half, she kind of kind of went to sleep. <laughs> I mean, that's how it is. I mean, this playoff basketball, you know, you got to get the job done. You know, you got to. You can't keep you can't keep looking, you know, and saying, oh, well, they didn't play. Oh, oh, but Ryan got to do this. You can't keep saying this your team and, and Alicia's the one, you know, doing the most, in my opinion. Um, in the Liberty, like I said, they Sabrina went off. <laughs> if Sabrina go off and you're winning, you know, that's not a good thing because she could get them back in the game. And Sabrina doesn't just shoot the three. She attacks the basket. She can shoot the mid-range. She's turned into a three-level score where in the past she just settled for shooting threes all day. So that's the difference between Sabrina and other players who shoot the logo three, <laughs> you know. Um, now, Las Vegas and Seattle, I keep telling you guys, and this goes to that chump on Showtime's channel. I'm not even going to say his name. He picked Seattle Storm in two. Then he picked another team to beat the Fever into trying to hedge his bets. Nobody believes him. He's a CC. He's a CC. Um, he's a CC. Um, you know, rider, P rider. That's all he is. So in this game here, I told everybody the storm were going to get swept. And the reason why is I've watched the storm all year. Auntie says, I keep referring to Auntie says because Auntie says know what the hell she be talking about. Um, I love Auntie says and says talk sports. I love what she does over there. Auntie told the truth. It's like they're the clunkies. And what she mean by clunkies is everybody's in their own way. Everybody does the same thing. You know, and to me, Gabby Williams playing the point forward really, to me, made them a lot better. But they don't have a they don't have a leader like whose team is it like that's the point. Whose team is it? Is it Skyler's team now? Is it um, Jewel Lloyd's team? I was thinking it's Jewel Lloyd's team. Um, and we just saw Jewel Lloyd's mom put out a tweet like, I mean, you, you barely playing her. So how are we going to win? My thing is this. 
Jewel Lloyd, and this is this, players have to set this as well. It's not just the coaches who has to put accountability on everybody. Jewel Lloyd should have came in telling everybody, look, this is my team. This is how we're going to run it. That's what she needed to do. That's one thing I give Diana Taurasi. Taurasi going to let you know, look, this is my squad. <laughs> you, you could say all this, talk all that, whatever. This is my team. And she already lets you know that. Jewel Lloyd, I think, was way too nice. I think Jewel Lloyd is way too much go with the flow. And it's not, and you got to understand, Jewel Lloyd never really had to be the main person or the main leader because she had Sue Bird there. She had Brianna Stewart there. So she always had somebody there to take over the role of the leader or take over the role of setting the team together. Now, I may be wrong about Jewel Lloyd. If somebody comes in the comment section going off, don't go off on me. Just have a great conversation. Just let me know if my assessment of Jewel Lloyd is wrong and we could talk about it. We don't have to go off on each other. We got to learn how to speak to one another and talk. Like we got to start getting back into that, having a conversation and slash debate instead of just going off saying, you don't know what you're talking about. Like how? I've just watched the game. <laughs> Jewel Lloyd and Jewel Lloyd wasn't really doing well like during the season. Her shot was on and off. I don't know if that had to do with Skylar being there because sometimes her and Skylar being each other's way. Horston, to me, it was the biggest mistake in not leaving Horston in the starting lineup. I would have left Horston in the starting lineup. What I would have done was this. I would have moved NECA to the five. I would have had Horston at the four. Gabby at the three. I would have brought Ezzy off the bench, but I don't believe Ezzy wanted to be on the bench. But I would have had that lineup out there because to me, Horston, Gabby, Jewel, and Skyler with NECA was a lot more dangerous than having Ezzy, NECA. You don't really need Ezzy and NECA out there together. Um, Horston could be your your defender who could could who could roam the um who can roam the paint. And NECA could be one on one with whoever Horston can roam the paint and jump off of her woman and get the set a trap or 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 or, or, um, or play the passing lanes or keep people from cutting to the lanes or cutting baseline. Gabby Williams should have been running point when Gabby Williams ran the point this year. It, it looked at a lot better to me because. Skylar loses her head too much. If Skylar doesn't get a foul or she's getting disrespected, she she loses her head. And this is why I don't like her at the point. To me, she would be better as a two guard than a point because her mind be all over the place. Jewel Lloyd, to me, was really the one left out of this because Jewel Lloyd never just felt comfortable the whole year playing in this system, playing with this team. She just never felt comfortable. She never felt like, okay, this is my team. This is how she, I just never saw it from her. She just felt like she was just a part of the band and she wasn't the solo or the leader of the band. You understand what I'm saying? She just never thought she was. Um, Horston did a great job. Horston had two great games. Now, down the stretch, she had a chance to hit the three to put them up or tie the game, and she missed it. The 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 aces, Chelsea Gray controlled the pace the whole game. Chelsea Gray controlled it. <laughs> Chelsea Gray controlled the paint the whole game. The whole pace, excuse me. Asia dominated the paint. Asia was getting rebounds and she was getting her own rebounds, but I don't see anybody hating on Asia. Oh, she got her own rebounds and she missed a shot, but nobody says anything. So <laughs> it's like, what are we talking about? You guys pick and choose who to hate on and who to like. And, you know, sometimes, you know, that can be very tiring to keep debating that point when you guys are just saying that because you hate one player because they're um 
because they basically go um, against your favorite player. Asia's Asia didn't really have to go off, but down the stretch, Asia was hitting big shot after big shot. And Kelsey Plum, even though it was real quiet, Kelsey Plum's 28, which she hit some hit some big threes early. She got it started early. And then as the game progressed, Kelsey was was playing some defense. She was giving it all. She was moving the ball. She wasn't settling for dumb shots. That's the Kelsey Plum I like. Now, if you tell me I can get that Kelsey Plum, I'll invite that Kelsey Plum to the Chicago sky because that Kelsey Plum is very calm, plays within the system. This is what I was saying to Brooklyn and Braz, like no disrespect to Dame Lillard, but the but but Dame Lillard can do what he does. But at times, I don't need him to take the logo three. I need him to get everybody else involved. Like I don't need Dame putting up 28 or 30. I may need Dame this game to put up 18 and 15 or 20 and 15 or 20 and 18. You know, that's what I'm saying. You are a point guard. If you're going to be labeled a point guard and play point guard. But if you're a two guard who just so happens to have playmaking ability. Then I need you with a higher assist. Part. I need I need you making the extra pass, moving the ball a lot more. I understand everybody doesn't have the greatest team, but. The, the point I was trying to make that night with Dame Lillard, you had the Golden State Warriors down 15 in each game and y'all got swept. And I was just mind boggled that definitive one, um, bro, gad. <laughs> and, and, and these guys didn't mention that. That's how I know you guys look at basketball differently. Not saying you guys don't know basketball. Y'all look at basketball differently from me. So it's like, all right. No disrespect, it's just I expect that. Um, you look at the numbers, everybody's like, well, Skylar Diggins Smith got these numbers, these numbers. I don't care about your numbers. I care about how you affect the game at certain parts of the game. You know, your objective as a point guard is to get your two guard or if it's your three, or if it's your four, your job as the point guard is to get somebody hot, to get somebody comfortable with their shots. Skyler at times doesn't do that. She does a lot of driving and in dishing or wrapping around passes to the big or to the or to, to the three or to the two, you know, or she'll throw it out once she penetrates. That's fine. But I need you to get the ball to Jewel Lloyd in spots where Jewel Lloyd feels comfortable. That's what I'm saying. Like to me, people were like, well, Skylar would Skylar on Chicago and stuff. Skylar. I don't, I don't think Skylar in Chicago, this Chicago team would fit because, but it probably would because I think she probably would be better for us than she would have been for Seattle because she would have been able to do what she got to do. Um, her and Kennedy would have probably bumped heads a little bit <laughs> because of their personalities, you know. But Skylar's thing is she's a she she she. I felt like she could have been more point guard this series instead of being more score. Chelsea Gray now people are like, well, Chelsea Gray she be scoring, she be shooting these shots. She um shoots these crazy shots during the game. She takes a lot of shot attempts. She does, but she takes her shot attempts within the flow of the game. You understand what I'm saying? Dame Lillard does that too, but sometimes he leaves the flow of the game and tries to force stuff. She, Chelsea Gray, what she does is she's still playing point guard even though she's scoring because she's making a decision. And plus, she could get her shot anytime she want. However, she's getting the ball in certain spots to Kelsey or to Jackie or to um or um to Asia Wilson. But the one thing that Chelsea Gray did that was very good that I love that she did. 
is that she was the way she threw the ball from the other end of the court to Asia. She just skipped it. And you know what she did? She threw Asia open. Now, I know that's a term you hear in football, but you can throw somebody open in basketball. She skipped the ball the way she threw it, bounced past it, and Asia already knew it. When they were near each other, they already knew what was going on. Chelsea gave her that look. If you go back and watch it before she makes that pass, this is how chemistry is built. This is how you know your player. This is the definition of point God, not G-O-D, G-A-W-D, because she's not a God. She's not an entity or a deity. She's a G-A-W-D. <laughs> she God. Her mama called the point God. I'm going to call it the God. <laughs> so she did. She skipped the ball. Asia ran, got it. It was perfect where she was going to be. Easy transition bucket. That's the difference between a great point guard, Hall of Fame, first ballot compared to a regular guard or average or just the good guard. She sees the play before it happens. That's something I don't see from any other point guards. Courtney Williams is close, but she has some mishaps, but she's close. But everybody else, I don't see it. Now, Vandersloot, when she got her head together and not dealing with family issues, because she had to deal with her father, I think, or mother passing away. I forgot which one it was. But for her to still play is cool. Sabrina has gotten better at seeing the play before it happens from a scoring standpoint and from playing off the ball aspect. But the greatest thing I saw in this Aces game is that Chelsea Gray controlled the whole game. No, even when Seattle took the lead, it still was Las Vegas pace. And this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. You guys look at it like this. The Aces are a championship team. They are a heart of a champion. They have been through every situation there has been. Every situation. And they continuously, you say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to dominate this situation. We're cool. Tiffany Hayes is, to me, is the sixth woman of the year. I'm sorry. Tiffany Hayes has more impact than any player off the bench that's left in the playoffs. I love Feebich. Feebich is right under her. But she's the best because when she comes in the game, she changes the whole flow of the game. She runs the point, and she could play the two, and she could play the three. Defensively, she's battling with the bigs on the boards. She's battling over screens. She's getting in Skyler's head. She's d up Lloyd. She's d up Horston and Gabby and all of these players. She's getting in their heads. And she's very physical. She brings that energy. And this is the difference between her and – um and our bench, our bench for the sky. Before Kennedy got to the starting lineup, that's how she was. What Tiffany was, that's how she was. Because when she came off the bench, she supplied a, a energy that we needed. Then she, then she got put in the starting lineup, and it just pushed us even more. Tiffany don't need to leave the bench because the, the aces have everything together. Jackie Young doesn't need to put up a bunch of points, but Jay Yo put up some big shots down the stretch from the mid range. She attacked the basket, got some, got some, um, got some easy baskets in crunch time. Her defense on Jewel Lloyd, her defense on Skyler, her defense. Jackie Young is probably the best defender on the perimeter of any player in the league. I'm serious. I love Kalia Copper. I love Jewel Lloyd, but J.O. is probably your best defensive perimeter player in the game. Pierre, like her defense when she switched on Gabby, it was it was great. Gabby tried to lower that shoulder. J.O., you could tell not only from her physique, but she has a strong base. A player who has a strong base if you run into them, it's hard to move them off of their spots because their base, like doing core work, 
You know what your core is? If you're an athlete watching this, you know what your core is. She works on her core. And that's something that a lot of players need to work on is their core. They need to work on their core. They need to work on they need to work on being able to build a base. And that's what she does well. You had Kelsey Plum irritating Scholar Diggins. Like the it's the little things that her um J O that um that that um Chelsea they were doing to the guards on the other team as well as the perimeter players. Now Mercedes Russell for the um for the storm she was okay. Ezzy came back, but Mercedes Russell played a little more because I think Ezzy is still dealing with concussion symptoms or something, protocols. I don't know how their protocols, their protocols, I said protocols. I don't know how their protocols are, but how she was, it was like she just didn't look the same. But now do I think, um, now do I think, um, do I think that if she would have been playing in the series, they would have won? I don't think they would have won. Because I believe that the Las Vegas Aces, the Las Vegas Aces are, um, they just, they're just champions. They're the defending champs for a reason. They're, they've rounded out in shape. I think all of them are on a page that just can't be duplicated. And everyone's saying the Liberty's going to beat them anyway next round. I don't know. I think the Aces are going to beat the Liberty in five games. And the reason why is Tiffany Hayes is going to be a problem in this next series. I love Feebich, but I love Feebich. However, Tiffany Hayes is a veteran. She's been doing this. You understand? She's been putting that time in. Been putting that time in. So. So she's going to be a problem. Um, Stokes. Kia Stokes is going to be good. They're going to need her body. Her defense against John Quell. Her. Um, Asia. You're probably going to play Gustafus in this series. Because Gustafus is very good. Um. Stretching the floor. You all right? Okay. She's good at stretching the floor. And she's good at rebounding as well and defending um, in the low post. She's not really strong on the perimeter. Um, Alicia Clark, um, Alyssa Clark, excuse me, her and Sydney Colson, when they get in the game, even though it's for limited minutes in game one and game two, they bring something, defense or hustle plays, or they change the energy and pace of the game. So Becky, and Becky, I love how she works the referees on the sideline. She be going off, and people think she's just going. This is what Teaspoon needs to learn. Teaspoon started doing it in the second half of the season. She was getting on the refs. She was going at the refs. She got tech. She was going... That's what we need you to do. You've got to work the refs. You've got to work the refs. If you don't work the refs, they're just going to keep calling BS on your players. And then when you're in the post game press conference, you gotta you gotta give a you gotta send tape. You've got to say you know like my players. You know I'm saying they're trying hard, but you know they're getting hit on some plays. You know. And, you know, we're fighting through it. You just you got to word it away where you don't get fined. This is what I try to tell people. Greg Popovich. No, excuse me. Not only Popovich, but Phil Jackson was great at this. This is if you go back and watch Phil Jackson will say certain things like, well, my player was he was here and then they tried to move him out of position. They, they did it. He's 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 giving you plays. And when his player got fouled, but he's not necessarily saying that the ref is doing a bad job. He's putting it out there so then the media could run with it. You know that that's what you want to do. Like Christy Sides did with Caitlin Clark earlier in the year. 
You know, that's what I'm saying. You got to work the refs. But I got the um, the Aces winning three to two next round. It's going to be Tiffany Hayes. Tiffany Hayes is going to um, – she's going to be the X factor. Um, Asia, I don't know if Asia is going to be putting up – I think she'll give you a 20 and 10. If Asia give you her 20 and 10, cool. Um, this series is going to be on Kelsey and Jackie Young. Jackie Young's defense on Sabrina is going to dictate how this series goes. Um, Brianna Stewart, you got um, – Brianna Stewart, I'm trying to think, they'll probably throw Tiffany Hayes out there early or they may throw Gustafsson. We don't know. We'll see. But Asia most likely will be guarding Brianna Stewart. And Jock Quell will be guarded by um by probably um Kia Stokes. Kia Stokes will be um in there guarding Jock Quell. And then you got um You'll probably have Chelsea on um if they start Feebitch, she'll probably be on Feebitch. Um Sabrina. Now Laney Walker. I mean Laney Hamilton. You might have I'm trying to think. You might have um Chelsea on Laney Hamilton. Kelsey will probably guard um Sabrina early, and then you'll probably put um J.O. on Feebich. Or you might put J.O. on um, Laney um, Hamilton because she's a lot stronger than Chelsea. So we'll see, man. Um, that's my breakdown of the yesterday's elimination games that the Liberty and the Aces, um, they did. That was, they did great work. Loved what they, what they did and how they played it, the game. So let me know in the comment section what you feel about the game. Um, if anything I missed, cool, you know, let me know. But please be respectful or I will block you. Please don't come in here trolling or I will block you. I don't have a problem blocking you. <laughs> the block button worked great over here. <laughs> so make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if y'all love what you hear, you can donate to the page. Go into the Cash App. Or you can um or you guys can um super chat when we're live or premiere a video, or you guys can leave a super thanks at the end of the video. Um if after you watch, you can leave a super thanks. Or you guys can um you guys can find me on Zelle. You know, you guys can um donate or donate to the Zelle. So that's all I got. Shout out to um Says Talk Sports, that's Auntie. Make sure you go to her page. Um, shout out to Simply Ball Dropping, that's KSAP. Shout out to Showtime. Showtime came on the show, man. Blazed it. Thank you, Showtime, man, for the love. Um, shout out to I Am Zo Media. Please subscribe to him. That's Prince. He breaks down the film. He's going to be breaking down NBA games as well this 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 um this season. Um, he's a he's a great dude. Only thing. That's the problem is he a Braun fan. <laughs> but other than that, he's cool. Um, who else we got? Queen of Love Sports. Um, Queen of Love Sports is is probably the most unbiased person I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like crazy how her naivety is real high. Not saying that in a bad way, but she's cool. <laughs> um who else we got? Shout out to Carcino for life, man. Big bro doing his thing over there. I got to go watch some of his videos. I've been doing so much of my stuff. I don't even get a chance to watch him. But shout out to Carcino for life. Uh, make sure you guys go to his Patreon. Sign up to the VIP. That's $25. Like, he's doing great things over there. I don't know if he raised it. But go over there. He, he got all the information on the stuff. Um on the, on the industry and everything. He also gives you tips on business and life. So check him out. Shout out to Scrub Zero, man. Scrub doing his thing. Shout out to Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez. Shout out to Who Did It This Time. Shout out to um, Kingdom Cast and um, C Pen with them cheating Kansas City. <laughs> the Kansas City cheeks. <laughs> Who else we got? Um, one true emperor. I got to get this FIFA one true so I can play you on it. I'm. I got the PS5 now. 
I'm gonna play you on that on FIFA one of these days. Bear Theater. Shout out to Bear. He had a birthday a couple days ago. So happy birthday to my brother. Um, I'm going to play you on that Madden or that um, NCAA soon. I'm going to get that so I can play you, Bear. <laughs> um, who else we got? Um, shout out to MDT Sports, my young boy. Um, MDT from the Bay Area, the Yay Area. He doing his thing um, in Ravens, man. They begin on his nerves. Um, shout out to um, – I got a lot of people I'm shouting out. <laughs> um, I said C. Penn. Oh, yeah, shout out to um, Kraken AMG, Styles Mutant, a.k.a. Mutant Styles. Um – who else am I missing? Oh, yeah, Strictly Unapologetic. Shout out to Strictly. And I think that's it, man. If I missed you, I apologize. I am out. Deezy.